we going? I got this meeting over on Toilet Street. There's a rifle up on the roof of the place next door. You need to go up there and make sure nothing goes wrong. You'll see me and my boys show up in a bit. You're my guardian angel. You don't trust these guys you're doing the deal with. How come you trust me? You got a good look about you. And I'm lucky with my gut feelings. After Nico luckily saves Packy McCreary escape a drug deal, they will connect to make money. But things led Nico into meeting the whole family. Nico then finds out they all had problems internally, along with causing problems in the criminal underworld and attempts to survive, getting nowhere fast. Although they were a big family, it's a reason why they didn't last. Before I get deep into things, the McCreary's were more alike than they would want to be. They all drink the numb things that happen in their lives, most of them did drugs for that same reason, but throughout they all looked down on each other to make themselves feel better along with other things. Around the time of meeting Packy, he already unknowingly started to do work for his other brother Francis. As I mentioned before, the only thing that made him different from his family was that he was a cop. Francis knew he couldn't last in the world his brothers made a living in, leading him into starting his own identity as far as being a criminal on the other side of things. But even with the things Francis had Nico do, he was aware he still had his own faults. But at the same time, he felt he was a good guy. Listen, I did what I did. I made a mistake. That don't make me the devil. To be honest, I don't really care one way or another. Well, I'm a good man. No doubt. Where to begin? I don't know. Let me put it like this. If a guy makes a mistake, should that ruin his life? Now, people don't understand how life is. Life is like a, a bowl of fruit slowly rotting in a hot hey, kitchen. I don't give a fuck about the life lessons, friend. What do you want? I'm a good guy. Where he went wrong at was the things he had Nico do. After killing the people against him, it really made him think he was better than the people in his family and in his career, being that nothing was on him anymore. Here are the files. Great. Peace at last. I feel cleansed. Whoa, music to my ears. A weight has been lifted. Here's your payment. Here. He's dead. Great. I can get rid of these now. I feel like a new man. Not many people get a second chance like this. It's my redemption. Your sins are absolved, I guess. Which is why he warned Nico down the line about being around his family in attempts to still be that good guy. After Packy invited Nico to his mother's house, we then see how the mother is the same too. The mother says how they will all be judged, showing no matter what they say throughout this video, they're all hypocrites, including the mother. All I'm saying is that we'll all be judged in the end. All of your brothers, and you, Patrick. And you, Kate? You got any drugs on you, boy? No. Shit. Well, probably a good thing. We got some business to take care of. Come on. Nico, what's this I hear about you running with Patrick McQuarrie now these days? He's got work, and he's a good guy. You're not planning on taking him down, are you? Lay off him, for me. I'm not planning on taking him down. He's my damn brother, you idiot. Packy McQuarrie, Francis McQuarrie. It's all starting to make sense. I knew Irish families were big, but I didn't expect to run into brothers in a place the size of Liberty City. Yeah, just thank the Lord you ran into Packy and not my other brothers. Packy's just a hood, but Gerald is into some serious shit. And Derek, he's the worst. If that asshole ever comes back from Ireland, I can't be held responsible for what I do. My brothers ain't no good, Nico. Trust me on that. You know what? Me and Packy get along. Maybe if doing what you do is good, then I want to be no good instead. I should meet the other McCreary's. Be careful what you wish for. Now with Nico finding out Packy and Francis were brothers, Nico starts to be around Packy more, being that Nico rather be involved on the criminal underworld side than the political one. With that being said, Nico starts to hear more stories about the McCreary's, but keep in mind everything Nico hears are from the McCreary's, showing more how they tear each other down, and when they don't, it's already too late. Our family used to be bigger than all them Mafia families put together. Back in the day, that is. Not this shit again. I heard this speech a million times. The McCreary's ran the city. People were scared to say their name, let alone come near their place in purgatory. Life was great. We were in charge. It's fucking true. I'd like to hear you tell Gerald that it's a boring story. My brother wouldn't take too kindly to that now, would he? I hear that Francis McCreary is your brother. Fucking Frankie, my brother. He may have a badge, but I tell you for a fact, he's as crooked as the rest of us McCreary's. More so. 
At least we ain't fucking hypocrites. Kate's the only decent one. You know Frankie, do you? I got a story for you if you do. Another fucking story. Shut up, Gordon. So, Nico, when Francis and Gerald was growing up, Frankie becomes an altar boy. He swears to this day that he wanted to serve the Lord. Jerry knows the truth, though. He only put on that cassock so he could pocket the change in the collection plate. Fact. That's Francis, down to a fucking T. I don't even know if he realizes what a crook he is. That sounds like the Francis McCreary I met. I bet. Model community leader my ass. You're just worried he'll start clamping down on you, ain't you, Paggy? I'd like to see him try it. Not gonna happen with the things Jerry knows. We see more of them tearing each other down. When Miko meets the last brothers, Jerry and Derek, before they rob a bank, Packy and Jerry are course bigger back and forth, along with Derek getting it too. Packy even says something that could have triggered Jerry, but although the family didn't see eye to eye, what Jerry says to Nico before he leaves shows they at least care for each other, although it didn't seem like it. Nico, these are my two brothers. Well, two of my brothers. Derek and Gerald. Hi. Derek has just returned to the family fold after a good few years in the old country, involved in the struggle. Sort of like you, I'd imagine. And Jerry? Jerry's the man. Yes, yes, it's uh, nice to meet you. Ha! <laughs> Nico's a trip, man. I met him through that Puerto Rican coke dealer. So you won't involve him in family business? What do you know about him? What I know is he likes a fight and he ain't the fucking law. Oh. No offense, mister. That ain't good enough. Well, it's good enough for me. He's a good lad, Jerry. Uh, was I talking to you, Brett Halfwit? <coughs> I make a point of not talking to the unfortunate victims of brother-sister marriage. Don't you speak about my parents like that. Oh, you're like fucking Cleopatra. Fifteen generations of brother-sisters fucking, and you're so thick you take orders off my idiot brother Packy. Who's so stupid, he had to tattoo his name on his arm. If there is a problem, I'll go. No trouble. There's no problem. Jerry just likes to think he knows best about everything, which is why he's been married three times already and still won't admit he likes men. Ah, no problem. I'll leave you boys to it. Packy, take care of Derek. He's been away. And you? Nothing personal, but don't fuck with my family, or I will fuck with yours. But the other side of this is why things could never work for them. While Nico and the brothers handle crowd control in the bank, they start an argument leading them into calling each other out about their drug habits. They spent too much time arguing with each other, it led someone to play the hero, almost messing up the task at hand. I got it! Get on the floor! Now! But sir! You too! Okay, okay! I'm a gun club member. I'm gonna take these rookies downtown. Hey, what's your name, son? Sweet, man. I don't think that's such a good idea. Come on. The PE-4 has been molded and is set to explode in 60 seconds. Now listen, people. We're your friends. Me and me brother here. Why are we... you telling them we're brothers, you idiot? That's going to make it hard for them to find us, isn't it? I'm trying to be honest with these people. We put them through a lot today. Fuck these people. Fuck your cause. That shit's over. Ireland's not the only thing that's green. Dollars are too. Now you've said bloody Ireland. That's gonna narrow the search, ain't it? Fuck you! Take the needle out your arm, then tell me what to do. I'll let you tell me what to do when you stop shoving half of Bolivia up your nose every Saturday oh, night. Fuck you! <laughs> fuck! We told you not to fuck with us! <laughs> Shit! Michael! Saint fucking Michael! <laughs> fucking shit! Get the money! Me and my brother watch the kids! Yeah, look at me After the bank job, Packy and Nico becomes closer to when it's shown he resented his parents. He even went to say how he wished his father died before he can even start their family. Packy has a reason to feel this way, but this shows more instead of taking accountability for his own doings, he pits it back on someone within the family to justify where they fell short. Maybe. Although my dad was both drunk and miserable. Right fucking idiot. I'm sorry about that. He messed the whole fucking family up, I reckon. I used to think I loved him, then I realized I hated him. Drunken bastard, fuck him. Has he been dead long? Yes, but not long enough. I wish he'd been drowned at birth, got rid of the lot of us. You're not very cheerful today. No, I'm sorry. Happy thoughts, puppies, and little girls smiling, and clowns, and all that shit. Jerry also does the same when Nico starts to work for him. 
We see Jerry go on a rant about his family regarding how low they have to go to get money, blaming his brothers instead of himself. Jerry was somewhat the head of the family criminal wise at the time, so him feeling this way is something to keep in mind to why they all ended up how they did. You handled yourself well on the bank job. It was fun. Fun? Too much fun. That's always been this family's problem. Fun. Good causes, a good laugh, some stupid dream or some stupid distraction. <laughs> but never any fucking focus. Never. Hmm. Focus. <sighs> All we've ever been is bitches working for guineas, working for niggas, any asshole with a buck. A whole lot spent in a proper manner. Oh, yeah. Wine and women as quick as possible and remain a slave forever. Very poetical. Yeah, I know. National tragedy. It's the same for Derek too. Just like Francis, he knew he was far from a good person. But again, he again blamed everyone around him besides himself. I care about getting people back who claimed I was a grass. Huh. I mean, I ain't a saint. I ain't a man of principle. I, I messed up. I made a mistake. But I admitted it. We all make mistakes. Exactly. As we know, Derek was a snitch before his death, so he had Nico kill the people he told on in efforts to keep his conscience after the mistake he made, just like how Francis had Nico do. He even pleased to Nico to kill the guy he sold out. Please, Nico, boy, just this last one. Please. Sure, Derek. Back to Francis, he finds out Derek was back in Liberty City. They had a conversation to when Derek threatened to ruin his career. But again, he thought he had Nico take out everyone against him. So with Derek showing his own motives against his brother, Francis had Nico kill him to keep his spy in his career. He justified killing Derek by calling out his demons. Why didn't you tell me Derek was back? What? Why didn't you tell me you was hanging around with my brother? I assumed if you cared, you'd have found out. Well, I have found out! Jesus! You know Derek's not well? No? No. He's sick. He always was. He's always off getting involved in someone else's fight, making a fool of himself, betraying people, going into hiding. He's an idiot and a coward. Whatever he stood for, he betrayed. He only left here in the first place because he was caught stealing from the Mafia. He's a pathetic wretch. Now, he's gonna ruin my life. It wasn't bad enough having a bunch of crooks for brothers. Now I've got him threatening to talk to a journalist about his family, about me. I am trying to become commissioner of police. I'd be a laughingstock. Cop with a famous snitching traitor for a brother. Ugh. You know, the crooks I can handle. See, that I can spin. But not this. Not this. You stop it. <coughs> stop? Stop. After Derek's or whoever's death, Jerry would get arrested, leading Packy the only one left on the outside, leading Nico and Packy to become more closer. They have a conversation to where we hear how confused he was in life, but instead of keeping it on himself, he brings up his own family and attempts to not seem so bad to Nico. You seem like a solid guy, Nico. I know you talk about this bad shit that happened to you, but I think you can get over it, you know? You're a survivor. No one but me can see what is in my head when I try to sleep at night. No one has the dreams I do. And you only know this, Nico. The one here in Liberty City. There are very few people in Liberty City who met me before the war. At least you know yourself, man. Fuck, I don't know what I am. An Irishman, an American. I think I'm straight, but when it's late at night and I need another gram, I, I've thought about doing some fucked up shit, man. My family's just as confused. Are we gangsters or cops? Drunkards or priests? Some people call this shit Catholic guilt. But I reckon it's just confusion. It's very rare to find one word that can sum up a feeling you have. In my language, in English, it's very rare to find a word that says it all. I think it's best to say nothing. You could be fucking right. Later while in prison, Jerry planned a job along with telling Nico about how he felt about his brother's death. You okay, kid? Yeah, I'm okay. 
I'm sorry about your brother. Man, me and Derek had quite a few problems. But he was my brother, and it hurts. Poor fucking bastard. He believed in something once, which is better than me, I guess. Jerry saying his brother believed in something at one point, the opposite of him, showed how it's easy for everyone in the family to speak about each other, whether it was good or bad. But at this point, him saying the good about his brother, it was too late, being that he's dead, of course. One thing to add, Jerry believed in something too. He just forgot as he got older. We hear this through Packy, making it too late now for him personally, being that he might have never got out. What's going on, Nico? Usual kind of chaos. Sure, sure. Chaos we all know about. Jerry was the only one who ever tried to live beyond the chaos. What makes him different? I'm not sure, but it didn't do him much good either way. I think it was because of Derek. Because Derek was a grass in England. He was involved in that business and he grassed on some people to avoid doing some serious time. And then went into hiding for years. I did not know that. That's why Jerry won't bend. He sees it as penance for the sins of his brother. Crazy fucking idiot. Also, what sealed Jerry's fate was that the plan he had to get some money failed, that being the diamonds. After this, he would just be in prison. Now, with one brother in jail due to making too much noise and another brother dead, it leaves us with Packy and Kate. Before I get into Kate, though, Packy mentioned how he also had an aspiration in life, but he felt he couldn't do it because he wasn't encouraged to do it. But for me, that's just another excuse, making it why it never happened for him. I've been rucking and getting fucked up for 15 years. Is this what I was put on the fucking earth for? I mean, I never paid any attention in school. When your family are drunks and killers, you don't really get all the moral discipline you might hope for. My father used to beat us to provide discipline. My father was a long way from a saint. I wanted to be an artist. I could draw really well. It wasn't exactly encouraged. I was kept home from school so I could roll joints for my dad. Soon I had different goals. Fucking stupid world though, isn't it? Now to Kate, her innocence made it seem like she was the opposite of her family. But if you really think about it, she was just as bad. We hear this from Packy after he started to deflect from being a hypocrite. So what's up, Nico? Not much. What's up with you and the family? Same shit. Well, Kate's being a bit odd, but you know about her. What I do know is she's a good girl. Yes, she is. I just wish she'd sort her head out. Learn to enjoy herself a little bit more. She seems more sane than the rest of you. Oh, looks can be deceiving. She can't enjoy herself. No sense of joy. I'm a lunatic, but at least I know how to enjoy myself by retarding myself on drinking drugs every day until I can't for the life of me remember why I'm miserable. In the beginning, she downs Nico and her brothers about what they do when the two conversate. You don't normally take the guys you date back to meet the family? Date? This isn't a date, Nico. We're just getting to know each other. We might be friends and that's all. I couldn't date you. Someone like my brothers? I couldn't do that to myself. She wasn't a criminal, but in reality she was along for the ride. Instead of separating herself, she was in the living room early on, somewhat encouraging the mess. So the plan was they were gonna hide the diamonds in the queen's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Nico. Hey, Kate. Quite sure you and Mr. Nico here will have fun on your play date. Hey. Coming, Ma. You boys play nice now. For sure. Kate. OK. Oh, we're going to play real nice. <laughs> we also see it when Gerald was free. <laughs> Nico. You made it, <sighs> huh? Well, I'll leave you to your men's talk. I hope you impress each other. She went so far to act like something she wasn't to Nico, she made it up that her father was a good man. We heard how Pecky felt about his dad. My father was a long way from a saint. Drunken bastard, fuck him. How is your mother? Me mother? I think it's the shame. The shame of her marriage to a drunken pervert. But this was Kate made up side about her dad. How is your mother? You know, just waiting around and wasting time until she can join my father in the eternal splendor of heaven. Do you think that is where he is? I hope so. I don't want to believe that every man in my family was as bad as my brothers. My dad was a drinker and he sure had a temper, but I believe in my heart of hearts that he was a good man. What did your brothers think? They hated him. They'd fight with him and scream at him and run away for days at a time before he dragged them home. What was different about you and him? I was his princess. I was the little girl. And I didn't give him a reason to discipline me. 
I guess I played up to it even more because my relationship with him was something I had that the boys didn't. Dad drove my brothers mad. I sometimes think that the reason they act the way they do is rebelling against him. But just like her brothers, she slips up showing why the whole family didn't last. The role she played became revealed. She learned that through a therapist. She even, of course, had a therapist because she wasn't happy in life, just like everyone else in the family. <sighs> Thanks, Nico. I needed this. Needed what? Some downtime. A moment away from the craziness of it all. My family. Life in general. With a family like yours, I would have thought you would have learned to cope by now. My whole life has been learning to cope. Maybe it's a break from it all. A new beginning. I was in therapy for a long time, Nico. It helped me a lot. It taught me how to get by, how to detach myself from people who upset me. Therapy works. It sort of works. I do not need some quack trying to get inside my head. Everyone needs a way to cope with his or her pain. I just hope that the way you choose to deal with yours is productive, not destructive. But for Kate, her cover-up of acting like things was fine, she stops doing that. While she's drunk, she spoke on her family, along with coming clean about what her father did to Packy and Jerry, aside from discipline. I'm drunk. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's great fun. Reminds me of being in a funeral. Then why drink? I don't know. Because my whole family does, and there's such a bunch of winners. My mother, she's great. They haven't invented a tranquilizer strong enough, but if she combines them with whiskey, she can get to sleep. My dad. He did awful things to my brothers. I loved him, but I knew. I fucking knew. And my brothers? <laughs> Look at them. Look at them. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Packy confirmed this to Nico himself, showing why the family turned out how they did. Enjoy hanging out. After all the craziness, recently and a long time ago, good. I also enjoy your friendship. Sorry about the troubles your family experienced. Really, I am. Thank you. No problem. Ah, it's always been weird. It's my dad's fault. He was an asshole. I know. You said. I didn't say everything. He molested Jerry and then he killed himself. Nobody speaks much about it. Sorry. I used to think maybe Jerry had killed him, but I think he killed himself. Damn, this is all so embarrassing. Why did I tell you that? I think that's what really destroyed the family. The old man was a sick pervert. Fuck. I never told anyone that before. But even with something crazy like this happening, they use this to down each other. Get your fucking hands off my fucking sister, boy. We're talking, not having casual sex, Patrick. I pray after the amount of practice you've had, you'd know the difference. Ooh. Sure, I know the difference. One leaves you feeling sad and empty and alone, and the other's casual sex. <laughs> and I'm quite sure you and Mr. Nico here will have fun on your play date. Hey! If there is a problem, I'll go. No trouble. There's no problem. Jerry just likes to think he knows best about everything, which is why he's been married three times already and still won't admit he likes men. Kate would do more of this to Nico after she goes through the things in her mind. It's not rocket science that the two liked each other, but she tells Nico to give up his life to be with her. She also tells Nico things in this conversation she should have did for herself, showing more how they use someone to help make them feel better without doing nothing to change their own situation mentally or emotionally. Are you okay, Kate? Yes. Good, no, no, I'm terrible. I'm not good at this optimism thing. I'm tired. Sorry. I'm tired of this life, tired of this city, tired of everything, I'm tired of myself, I'm tired of you. We don't have to be friends anymore if it upsets you. Oh, shut up. I don't mean that. I like you. I really like you. You know I do. I like you. No, you don't. You don't like anything. You tolerate me. Like you tolerate life. But you don't like me. If you liked me, you'd give this up. Give up this life for me, I mean. I don't think men can change. So you could do this until you've killed everyone? Or until you die? Your life must be hell. You have a very American way of looking at things. Give it up! Move away! Grow up! Get out! You could be happy! It's over. This life of yours? You can change. At least think about it. Sure. I'll think about it. Thank you. I'm saying all this to say Kate's no different. She's messed up like the whole McCreary family, but instead of living her life, all she did was blame her family for not living her life. So when she was out with Nico, 
it was hard not to bring up her family when she isn't down in Nico. Right before she dies, she basically gives Nico an ultimatum, telling him not to do the deal with Dimitri. Then when he listens, she gives him a seemingly condescending response. Hey, Kate. I took your advice. I cut my connections with that man. I'm really proud of you, Nico. It must have been really hard to turn down the money and stick to your principles. On the way to Roman's wedding, she goes even further to down Nico. She also tells Nico how she was willing to take a chance with him, even though she knew of the life she acted like she despised. So, how do sociopaths behave at weddings? Will you fire a gun into the air as your cousin walks down the aisle? No, there won't be any gunfire at this wedding. Recently, I have tied up a lot of loose ends in this city. My past does not haunt me in the way that it used to. I've tried to separate myself from it. And I'm ready to try to be good. Are you? Are you prepared to say goodbye to the fast cars, the drugs, the violence, the cheap women? Yes, I am. How do I know that you're right for me? How do I know that I won't get hurt? I'll look after you, Kate. I promise I'll protect you. You fucking double-crossed an immigrant shit! Nico! Nico, come on! Oh. Somebody call an ambulance! Call a fucking ambulance! She's dead! What? Oh shit! 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 She told me to leave it! I thought I had! I thought it was over! It's never over, Aya! Nico, you can't blame yourself! Of course I can! She's dead! Easy, easy, easy! Are you better, uh. man? Nico, of course, blamed himself but he did listen to Kate regarding not doing the deal. Not to be dark, but Kate's the reason of her own death. In a way, she even said it to Nico on the way to the wedding. Do you think that the men you've been dealing with will let you walk off into the sunset? So with her knowing that her going to this wedding was her mistake, but again, she made the decision. Leading Packy into being the only one left, leading him to take Nico's advice to leave Liberty City. It ain't too late for you to get out of here, Packy. It ain't too late until you're dead. I'll try to remember that. The McCreary's all went through their own things, leading them into becoming a little messed up. But instead of sticking together, they all did their own thing. Packy wasn't around Elizabeth to help anyone in his family. It was to feed his coke addiction. Francis separated himself from the family after they didn't accept him, leading him to do his own thing. Jerry spent his last days free, doing things to survive, even though he hated it. Derek came back from Ireland, leading him to be reminded about his past, leading him to spiral out of control. Packy and Gerald thought they were helping by sending Nico to help him, but he needed more other than to kill the people he told on. The mom stayed by their dad, even with knowing he touched two of their kids, with the whole family knowing, but never not talking about it. When they were together, they just berated each other. They all cared for each other, but they never showed it until it was too late. Then the crime they got himself into was short term, on top of them fighting amongst each other, showing why the McCurry family didn't last.